This is an untenable situation across sports. Why are these guys like Supreme Court justices? It's like you're made, you're an NFL official. You have the job until death. How is this allowed to happen? Where is the accountability? I get it. They're in a tough spot. But can't we do better than the current process we've got out there? The answer has to be yes. Well, everyone hates them. But do referees actually love their jobs? I mean, they do get to whistle while they work. So just how tough is it being a professional ref? I can't think of another profession that the scrutiny is so intense. In real time, you cannot believe how tough it is. I think a lot of it is the pressure that you put on yourself. While referees get called every name in the book, it was the founder of English lexicography, the practice of compiling dictionaries, named Richard Molcaster, who was probably the first and last person to ever want them around. As in 1581, he was writing about something called f football? I don't know, not important. And suggested that the game might go smoother if there were a judge over the parties. It apparently took a lot of further review because nearly 300 years later, William McLean became the first professional umpire, while refs officially took to the football pitch in 1891. And since they were referred to, the term referee was born. So that's the history. But when it comes to the current day, there's just a little more to it than that. In officiating, there's so many things that people don't realize. You have to make an impression in your mind in basically 1 64th of a second. Regardless of what the mechanics are, you have to be where you need to be. And you need to be there before it actually happens. Not only are they standing in the right place, but they're looking in the right place, but they're also looking in the right order. Officials are making decisions before each play, during each play, and after each play. So if you if you add all that together, there's thousands and thousands and thousands of decisions that are being made every game. And the overwhelming majority, we don't talk about. True, as the only thing that does seem to get talked about is how much refs suck. But believe it or not, they have gotten better with time, given leagues like the NFL made the system more rigorous, not only assigning designated positions, but also in hiring Hugh Shorty Ray in 1938 who they credit for increased preparation, including making sure those in charge of enforcing the rules actually knew the rule book. Yes, even the tuck rule. But now they are expected to enforce it correctly every time or else. The most important assignment that you get is the first game of the following season, because that means you've made it through another year. We're, we always hear about accountability for officials and, and they want them to be held accountable and they really are. Every official has every play graded, every call they make, every nine call they make. It is the reality that officials get let go. There's going to be a turnover this year. I would estimate, I know seven now, and um, and I would estimate it will probably climb to 10. I just think sometimes fans, if they, they want to see that. And, uh, and if they don't see it, they don't they don't believe that it exists. Though fans probably do want to see referees who mess up undressed publicly, those who saw them in 1920 would know refs once wore white dress shirts, a bow tie, and often even a beret type hat, with formal attire meant to express an air of authority. But because many teams also wore white, it didn't work out. As in that same year, a quarterback passed the ball to an official named Lloyd Olds, mistaking him for a teammate. The mishap bothered Old so much that according to legend, he asked a friend who owned a sporting goods store to make him a uniform that stood apart. And hence referees changed their stripes or changed two stripes, making zebras the target of fans ire. Since it isn't exactly an occupation filled with positivity. I'm almost over the scars I had from my career <laughs> of self punishment and, 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 and all of the negativity. You're being evaluated all the time and there's very little positive feedback ever. Like you did a really good job. I don't know if I've ever heard you, you did a really good job. <laughs> this isn't a profession that most people run to. Your biggest critic really is yourself. So there's a lot of negativity between not only, you know, yourselves, but your supervisors, coaches, fans, it comes from all these locations. So you have to be really a strong well person, a very focused person, and just focus on the work. When crowds ask, what are refs looking at? Well, it's usually their own mistakes over and over, and they can both see and take abuse from every angle. So yeah, I feel bad, but also like they're, they're just, they're bad. 
Like they're just not good at their jobs. Maybe it's an impossible spot, but they're still not good at it. You can put up with abuse that you get from coaches most of the time, and even sometimes from players, but it's the fans. And on the lower level, it's the parents, which are causing 80% of the people that sign up to officiate to leave. And they treat the officials disrespectfully. And then we end up with younger, younger people that are trying to get into officiating, having bad experiences. And then they quit. And we don't think about it. And we love the bash officials, but we're in a dilemma because we're not going to have enough. We are not going to have enough to support the game, to officiate the game in the lower levels. Kind of gives get the hell out of here a whole new meaning. Because if we know an official's name, it's likely for the wrong reasons. If they are held to a standard kind of beyond reason. Their level of accuracy would get you an A on a test, but gets them called A-hole. As the way refs are treated is flagrantly foul. Yet, they just go on to the next call. The world of an NBA referee is to live in that, that space that isn't perfect. If you guess at the wrong time in, in, in any sport, but in, especially in professional sports at major league level, it has a big impact when you're wrong. Obviously, you're going to make mistakes early on, early on. But as you progress through officiating, the game should slow down for you. You know, we're only going to focus on those three or four calls that, that maybe they got wrong or maybe were controversial. Um, and you just you have to you have to try to mitigate those. You have to limit those because that, that those impact games without question. You know, while it's acceptable for players to make mistakes and a coach to make a mistake, the strive for the officials or the expectancy is 100 percent. But it doesn't happen. It can't happen. It will never happen. I get it may not be cool to feel for officials, but I do. How would you feel if every decision you made was reviewed and all the good ones were left in the rear view? No one wants to be judged solely on their worst moment, but being a referee is a profession full of blame and no credit. They get rightfully roasted when they're wrong, but they are right way more often. And they clearly care about getting better. So like Dak Prescott, we might all owe refs an apology. I'm Robin Lundberg, and now you know.